Hawaii's famed volcanoes are the most spectacular, and yet the most readily accessible in all the world, and offer a magnificent view of nature's greatest power display. They are the legendary home of the fire goddess Pele. The date is February 28, 1955. And for the first time in over 100 years, a violent eruption is underway in the Puna district on the island of Hawaii, about 200 miles over water from Waikiki Beach and the Honolulu area on Oahu. This eruption touched the lives of a thousand people, destroying homes and valuable lands, yet there were no deaths. The mighty lava fountains and rivers have erupted on the east rift zone of Mauna Loa, a mountain that is the greatest single accumulation of lava on Earth, over 10,000 cubic miles in all, built up by countless eruptions down through the centuries. A rare sight as a volcano erupts in the backyard of a home with devastating results. Lava boulders as large as a house are carried along in the crest of the river. These are formed by large sections of crater rims breaking off, or maybe a portion of a lava river bank, which has been undermined. Hawaii's volcanoes have a fascination for all. It is quite true that the natives and tourists alike run to and not from the eruptions. Yet, they all have a deep respect for the fire goddess Pele who, according to legend, is responsible for the volcanic activities. For they will occur whenever she returns to one of her many homes on the slopes of Mauna Loa. The lava rivers that flow over the land cause most of the damage. They may move swiftly, or they may just inch along. But nothing can stop their forward march. This once beautiful palm grove is doomed to a fiery death. The soft rustling of the trade winds to the palm fronds has forever been stilled by the incinerating power of the lava flow. Each tree dies with majestic grace. This eruption continued for 88 days. One of the lava rivers soon reached the ocean and formed a firefall. The molten lava tumbling over the cliff drops into the ocean and great explosions occur. This is visual evidence of how the islands were formed. For as the lava cools, it now becomes a part of the land slowly adding more and more shoreline. Five years have passed, and now on November 14, 1959, another great eruption started. As viewed from the air, at its start, at least seven different crater mouths were spewing forth lava in fiery fountains. This time it occurred in the great caldera of Kilauea, high up on the slopes of Mauna Loa. Once again, Pele had returned dramatically to another of her many homes. Daring and resourceful cameramen descended into the crater area, proceeding across the newly formed lava lake, which had crusted over to photograph these fantastic scenes. Note how this huge lava boulder has formed a perfect image of the head of Pele. She seems to speak as lava moves across the lower portion of her mouth.
Mark Carter, award-winning volcanic photographer, moves in for a close-up shot. Visitors at the famed Volcano House on the rim of Kilauea Crater were among the first to reach the eruption area. For Kilauea Iki was just a short distance away. And rangers of the National Park Service designated places of safety for the volcano watchers. Three days after the start, the eruption again gained in fury and fountains spurted to a height of 1,150 feet. In a week's time, the pool of lava in the crater was 300 feet deep and it buried the vent from which the fountain had been spurting. This action continued unabated through a series of 16 eruptive phases, each lasting from 2 to 32 hours of light. Cinders fall continually and devastate the surrounding area. The nearby Park Road is buried under the Black Deluge. Activity goes on, and at one point, a record fountain height of more than 1,900 feet was recorded. This resulted from an unusual amount of gas present in relation to the amount of liquid lava coming out. Great whirlwinds are generated by the intense heat and swirl upwards in menacing cycles. You may wonder about volcanism. How does all this happen, and why? If you will keep in mind that underneath the great caldera of Kilauea, a giant sort of plumbing system exists. Now this pipeline, or conduit system, leads downward toward the great pools of magmatic matter that lies beneath the surface of our Earth, at depths up to 40 miles. This fluid matter is restlessly moving about in some unexplained manner and its motion is indicated by the seismograph instruments on the surface in the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory on the crater's rim. Its presence in increasing amounts is measured by an elaborate system of tilt meters, also designed and installed by the observatory at strategic locations on the mountain. Now these instruments are capable of indicating just how much the ground is tilting in one direction or another. This is of great importance for preceding an eruption, the area swells, much like a balloon being inflated. And this produces an outward tilting and is indicative that the magma is rising and can result in an outbreak. After an eruption, the swelling stops and the tilt becomes measurable inward. Another indication of the movement of lava through the conduit is the increasing number of earthquakes recorded and the frequency location and depth serve as still another indication of the coming of Pele. She is a fiery yet gentle goddess, for Hawaiian volcanoes are characteristically non-explosive. The lava is of high fluidity and of low gas content, thus it escapes in the form of fountains without undue explosive violence. Its fluidity also results in high speeds of lava river flow, and it reaches speeds up to 35 miles an hour under certain conditions. Before Kilauea Iki died, it had built a conical hill 150 feet high and had left a pumice blanket five feet deep, half a mile from the vent. When it was all over on December 21st, the lava pool in the new crater was 380 feet in depth and contained over 51 million cubic yards of lava. 
We end our trilogy of Hawaii's volcanoes with the Puna eruption on January 13, 1960. Following earthquakes, giant cracks appeared in the village of Kapoho, and residents started evacuating. At 7.30 p.m. in the valley, just behind the town, the eruption started from a rift a mile long. Fountains sent lava cascading over the land, and some of it encountered underground water, resulting in great explosions of steam and throwing lava chunks high into the air with a roar of a hundred jet engines at full power. The stores of the village of Kapoho were hastily abandoned as the fountains danced in the nearby valley and cinders poured over the area. brought in to divert the flow, but it was an impossible task. Orchid growers saved many of their valuable plants from the menacing flow as the caretaker's home goes up in flames. On and on it moves relentlessly, and a giant stand of palms falls victim to the searing heat. Hawaiians have their own phraseology for parts of the volcanic activity. When a lava river separates into two parts and then again reunites, it leaves a piece of land, much like an island. This is called Kipuka. And there are many of these on the slopes of Mauna Loa. A smooth, ropey, or billowy type of lava flow has an equally smooth sounding name, Pahoehoe, the rough, spiny and pebbly surface of lava, which is difficult to walk on, is called ah-ah. Uh -uh. While not all visitors are privileged to witness an actual eruption, there are many places where volcanic manifestations are evident. The great sulfur banks near the volcano house can be inspected at close range. One may stumble across a real find, a piece of olivine, and sort of a volcanic diamond, or maybe a lock of Pele's hair, or explore a lava tube like Thurston's, where you may walk through a lighted tunnel in which liquid lava once coursed in centuries past. For 36 days, the fury of the eruption continued and the once peaceful village of Kapoho was surrounded by an inferno. Closer and closer, our cameramen worked their way, and these breathtaking scenes of the fountains and fast-flowing lava rivers are evidence of their daring. For remember that the temperature may reach 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit, and the surrounding air is superheated to an extreme degree. But once the volcano bug has bitten you, 
you're attracted by the magnetic presence of Pelly. And you plan your approach to her fiery court with great care. Before Pelly was to leave, she gave her greatest demonstration of power. Kapoho soon turned into a ghost town with only charred embers of its buildings remaining. On the island of Hawaii, that Hawaiian volcanoes are active in our time, and its main cities have been built with respect to the possibility of eruption. Pele takes away, yet she also gives, and her sweeping lava flows enter the ocean to form new land along the coastline of Hawaii. The hot lava is cooled by ocean waves and vegetation soon starts. Before many months, the tiny lichen and ferns have found root, starting another life cycle on the ever-growing island of Hawaii. <laughs> 